Hey, welcome back to Mastering EDM with Logic Pro, and this is the fourth video in the series, and we're gonna be covering folders and buses. Uh, folders are pretty much exactly what they sound like. They're folders that you could throw stuff in at just for sorting and organizing, and uh, you could do some pretty cool stuff with them uh, other than that also, but uh, I'll get into that in a minute. And um, essentially, it's the same idea as um, folders on a computer. So, you know, you have uh, a folder which in itself isn't really anything, but when you start putting stuff in it, 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 um, it has a meaning and it has purpose and value. So that's pretty much the same thing in Logic um, to some degree. Uh, you have two types of folders. We'll cover folders first, then we'll go to buses because buses are uh, a little bit more complicated. And, um, you know, when I start with uh, folders here, it'll actually lead into buses pretty well. So, um, so what we have is we have uh, a bunch of tracks here. And as I already showed you, these are folders um, that are already made and they're, they're preset as folders. But for the sake of this, I'm going to start by making... A, uh, a folder. So I have two um, audio tracks, just regular audio tracks we talked about before. Um, they have audio files loaded into them, so you could uh, so you could hear the audio coming out of them. And, uh, and let me um, turn this one down because otherwise it'll cause crazy things. But if I just listen to these two, it's basically two kick drums laid on top of each other. So you get that. And um, now to throw these in a stack. Uh, is what the folders are called. Um, what you do is you hold shift and you select a s one or more. So so right now you could you just normally click to have one. You hold shift to select more. Uh, so right now I'm just going to throw these two into a stack. And, um, and how I do this is at, once I have them selected, I right click with my mouse and I click where you go. Here we go. Create track stack. Now there's two options here: folder stack and summing stack. Now um, the folders are are really easy to use, and they're pretty much just for management. When you get a lot of tracks, and say for instance you want to just throw all your drum stuff into a drum stack, so I, you know if you want to get all your drum stuff out of the way, you could just close that up, and uh, and it's it's reduced to one track. So you can do that. And um, that's what this is here. And a summing stack is a little bit more complicated. I'll start with a folder stack, just let you guys know what that is. And um, you know, you could start with that idea here. So um, what we have here now is if I have this selected, you'll see that there's, it's just blank right here, which is rather unusual compared to the other stuff that has plugins. It has something, but right here, it's just completely blank. That's a folder stack. Now, folder stack means that you can't do anything to this top layer, and it's just for management of these. So you have um, you have these two tracks, and they they're for your convenience. They're put under here so that you could open and close it. Um, it appears, yep, it appears as though you can um, change the the volume, the overall volume of these tracks. Uh, right here. However, there's pretty much nothing else that you could do with it. So, um, so essentially, all this is is it um, takes tracks and put them into one stack so that you could get the stuff out of the way. So that you know, say I had like you know 16 tracks for drums, like hi hats, crashes, and uh, kick drum, and then you have um, uh, snares and everything like that. So that that gets pretty big. So you could throw that into a uh, just a folder here so that, you know I want to see everything else right here easier without having to zoom in you can just close that up and um, it conveniently you know makes it smaller gets it out of the way now the second one uh, I'm gonna undo this here and the second one is more complicated and it leads into buses so now if I create a track stack again but this time I choose a summing stack um, and I create that, you'll see here, if I have this top one selected, I have everything that I'm used to. And it says bus nine right here is a source. So this is where things get interesting and this is where I introduce buses. Buses are, um, uh, so essentially, normally you have a regular track and it goes to the stereo output. 
And uh, in terms of our mixer, that basically means anything that that um, starts somewhere and ends at stereo out just goes to your speakers, basically. Or essentially, it goes to this, which is your master, um, your master, your master channel strip. And so everything gets sent into here. And this goes directly to your speakers. As you can see, this says stereo out, but this has nothing here. And that's because this is the stereo out essentially. So normally things go to stereo out and that's your, you know, your final, um, your final chance to, to modify the audio before it gets sent, uh, to your speakers, your headphones or whatever. So, um, so that's the normal case. But in this case, if you see, um, these ones, which are in this summing stack that I made, uh, they don't go to stereo out. They go to bus nine. And what is bus nine? Well, if you look right here, this, the source is bus nine. So essentially what it's saying is, okay, these guys, all the audio right here is going to go from the top, from this, down through whatever plugins we may have, and then it's going to go to whatever sends I have, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then it'll finally go to bus nine and bus nine is the source of this. So everything that goes to bus nine goes through all of these plugins, goes to whatever sends here, and then it goes to stereo out. So I have these two kick drums and I could, th if I throw a plugin on the sum of them, then it'll affect both of them. So for instance, uh, what's something really funky I could do here? Um, we'll just do a spectacle gate because that does weird stuff here. And crunchy band pass. Okay, so normally, uh, I'm gonna disable this. We have, we have this sound coming from the kick drums. Okay, now if I turn this on, let's say that. It sounds completely different. Um, now without going into this plugin and what the heck it does, if I look here, there is nothing on these, there is nothing on the channel strip here. It's just the audio goes into it and then out bus nine, uh, audio goes into it and out to bus nine, bus nine goes through this effect that I have in, and then it goes to stereo out. So that's essentially what it is. It's like, it's like, uh, creating a middleman. So instead of um, me giving you something uh, directly, I give it to someone else and they could uh, they give it to you or they could like, you know, bend it in half and then give it to you. So that's um, that's the way that works. Now, um, sends are a similar idea. Um, so what I'll do here is the easiest one and the most common one for sends is you send um, just to any any bus that is unused. Um, there's a whole bunch of used ones just because the, the presets tend to create ones. Uh, but yeah, I'll just go bus 20 and, um, later in the next, um, in the next video, I'll talk about buses and organization and stuff like that and how to optimize your workflow. So you'll see that I usually don't use bus 20 for reverbs, but it's any, any bus technically works. It's just the numbering system, which works best for you. So in this case, um, what happens is the audio goes in from bus uh, from bus nine here, which which we know is these, and then uh, it goes through the plugins and then out bus twenty additionally, and then it goes to stereo out as the final. So right now, bus twenty actually has no effect, as in nothing happens um, because not because there's nothing in the channel strip of bus twenty. If you'll notice uh, when I have a bus selected. It shows up right here, and if I click stereo out, it gives me the stereo out master channel strip, and um, and uh, so the reason this nothing's happening is not because there's nothing here, but because I'm not sending anything. So when I drag this up, it's basically you know okay, how much am I sending? Am I sending it at zero, which is full volume? Am I sending it to plus something, which is above the regular volume? Or am I sending it to minus something which is less than the regular volume? So, um, so let me just set this to zero, and uh, so that's full volume. And essentially, what we'll get is it'll go down here to bus twenty, which is at full volume, and uh, it'll go out the stereo out through bus twenty. And it'll also additionally because it's sending a copy, 
it sends a copy there, it sends the original to the stereo out also. So what happens is um, the, the output is, whoops, I had the other stuff. Okay, so the output is double the volume as if I had this all the way down. So let's see here, stereo out. So you see negative 8.1 is the peak. And then if I pull this up to the full volume, it's negative 11. That doesn't make sense. Uh, it's probably because it's phasing or something. No. Oh, no, wait. Oh, that's, I see. Because I sent it to here and I was still selecting. So here's stereo out. What's stereo out? There we go. Negative 2.1. So and then if I turn that back down, click on stereo out, you'll see it's negative 8.1 instead of negative 2.1. So it doubles the uh, the volume. But um, just because of the nature of analog, uh, the the analog audio curve, whatever you call it, um, it's not actually technically double the number. But anyway, um, that aside, so you see it's sending a copy. It sends the original as well as this. So now what I could do is I could send this full volume and then throw a reverb on here. The space designer and then do my preset for this. this is a really long one. So, um, so essentially what it's going to do is it's going to send a copy to here, which gets converted completely and entirely into reverb. So there's none of the original sound. And so right here is entirely reverb. That goes to the master output. And then additionally, you have the original uh, audio that it, it's, it's sent to here as a copy, as we said, and then it continues and also goes to the master output. So you have the original, and then you have bloop this, which is entirely reverb. And if you listen to that, you have a lot of reverb there. Now, um, there are a couple types of uh, ways you could send this. You could send it post pan, post fader, pre fader, whatever you want. Um, now I'm not going to cover that right now because it's, it's, uh, it's, it'll be easier to touch on later when you get more used to things. But essentially, if you think of it this way right now, um, everything is being sent, uh, through here after considering the current volume of this. And if it's panned left or right for this, uh, if I change this to post fader, then it doesn't consider pan. And if I change this to pre-fader, it does not consider pan or the current volume level. So just to put this into terms, uh, so right here I have, that's the volume, okay. You hear the reverb. Now if I turn it down that low, the reverb also goes quiet. But if I send that back up to regular and then change this to pre-fader before considering what level this is at, you have that, which is a regular. Well, that kind of makes sense. And if I turn this down really low, listen. So the audio for this is really quiet. In fact, it's completely drowned out by the reverb. So, um, so, but this one remains the same volume. That's because it's not considering this. Normally, you'll just keep things at um, post band, just because that makes it easier. Uh, either that or post fader, depending on how you want to work the things. But by default, it's set to post pan, which makes sense. So um, so that's basically folders and buses. Now, you can do a lot more with buses, but that gets uh, that's, you know, not not in the scope of this part right here, just introducing you to buses. So when I start using them, it makes sense. Now, uh, one brief thing, if I click on one of the presets here, um, one of them undoubtedly, here we go, it has sends already. So right now we have this, which uh, sounds like whatever it sounds like. Then you also have these. Nothing is being sent, as you can see here, so they don't affect it at all. But if I click it, okay, let's see what's here. So right here, Space Designer, that's a reverb. So this one's a reverb, and this one is also a reverb. So there's two different types of reverbs that are kind of preset here that um, theoretically go with this instrument. And um, if I f figure, oh, I, I need some reverb, instead of putting it right here, I can just um, I could just turn this up and work with that. Now, I, right now, if you see, that one was blue. It wasn't green. So that means this must be set to, <gasps> it's not set to post pan. It's set to post fader. Now, I might have confused things about the order of post pan and post fader, but uh, don't worry too much about that um, because that's, that's a minor issue. And, um, if you run into really having the need for that, uh, you could just figure it out through experimentation because that's the majority of, uh, how you'll learn. You need to experiment and, uh, learn things yourself. So, um, 
So yeah, if I mix that up, like what if it goes, if it considers pan first or fader first or fader first or pan, whatever, um, that's not that big of a deal. Um, whatever it's set to as default is fine for the most part. And if you feel like you really, like you don't want it to consider the fader, then just set it to um, pre-fader. So, um, so that's, yeah, like I said, that's, that's buses and that's folders. Uh, the two difference, differences between a, a um, summing stack and a folder um, is that a summing stack, you could throw plugins on top of it and everything goes through this. Um, it's kind of like a sub master. So it's not the master, but it's before the master. Um, so everything goes through this and then it goes to the master. So you could change that up. Whereas a folder is just for kind of conveniently organizing things. So uh, keep that in mind. And uh, as uh, one last reiteration for buses, buses are basically uh, middlemen for um, getting between the, uh, the, the source, whatever that source may be, if it's another bus or if it's an actually original track, um, and then the master output. And um, the way you could use sends is via a bus, or the way you could use buses is uh, via, um, via send, or you could actually make it the output. So uh, output turns it into a 100% middleman um, between the original and the uh, output, and the send sends a copy. So additionally, you have it, it goes out to whatever the output is, and it also goes through the send depending on how much this is. So that's, uh, that's buses and folders in a nutshell. If you like this video, um, please feel free to subscribe or like or comment. And if you have any questions, also let me know. I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And um, the next video is going to be the last video in the five part series, which is just introducing logic. And I'm going to be covering uh, workflow and optimizing and stuff like that. So that whenever you get into logic, you could start working without having to set up things every time. And um, and uh, so to make that more convenient. So um, thanks for watching. And uh, as I said, feel free to subscribe or anything like that. And uh, work with logic, experiment, try, try new stuff if you have it. If you don't have logic, feel free to keep watching tutorial videos because that'll really help you when you get logic. So that's it. See ya.